Hello everybody, this is Budrich and in this video my FM Rice brings all the soils to the yard and damn right it is uh, more of a dirt tack than yours. Uh, let's start by just bringing up this little note list I, I created for the video so I don't lose track too much. Um, First off, also, I just got a comment I saw on, on the YouTube channel, someone asking what, what I use to, to take notes here. This is uh, a Sublime, actually. Uh, this is actually Sublime. I can bring up all, all the elements here if I wanted to. So, you see, it's a full Sublime window, uh, but I use this window only to take uh, notes uh, using the uh, plain notes no plain tasks uh, uh, you can search for it in package control uh, it's a great uh, little or th this is actually kind of uh, uh, um, bloated almost package for sublime created by this guy Aziz I think he's Swedish actually uh, <clears throat> And you can create notes and stuff here. I really recommend you, you, you trying this out. I was using another program uh, or another package uh, by the same author, Plain Notes. And it, it's almost the same thing, but this Plain Task, it have uh, with Plain Notes, then you can have different colors and stuff for sections. But Plain Tasks is more for to-do lists and this is more for notes. But I, uh, in my opinion, that's a bit overkill having a special note system. You can just use uh, Markdown instead, normal Markdown files. But this you can you you can make little projects and and uh, uh, checklists here that you can easily toggle and stuff. It's it's great. Plain tasks. Uh, highly recommend that. So that's that. That was completely off topic because the topic of the day is Thunar. Let's bring it up. Let's bring up the Thunar. Well, now it will overlay my, my list there. So let's do this. No. Let's do this. Then. Bring up a Thunar there and then I can move the notes to this window. That's good. That's good. It almost looks uh, professional, amazing. Um, so Thunar, here is my Thunar window. Everyone, uh, or everyone, but a, a lot of people is is uh, really want want my 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 config here, and I want to know how I have done this. I I have no idea what they are really. Uh, what it is that they want, because if you look at this Thunar window here, it's nothing. It's no customization done to this at all. All I have done is uh, disabling the, the UI here, which you can do from, from the menu, which I have done. This is how it looks like by default, you know, with all this crap. Uh, something like this. Mm. But that's one of the nice things with Thunar is that you, oops, not the menu bar, but uh, let's disable the status bar, let's disable the, the side panel, let's disable, you, you see, you just select what, what, what's already there and it will disappear. That's my customization, end of the video. No, kidding. Of course, that's not my full uh, Thunar rise here, but that's one nice feature of Thunar is that you can uh, easily Disable the UI. <laughs> okay, um, let's uh, let's uh, open the Pix directory, and as you can see here now, this changes this, uh, which is the title format. This is this is actually i3, uh, just a tab in i3. So if I would open a different window here, you can see these are i3 tabs, and this is not part of Thunar itself per se. And this is changed. Uh, Whenever I open a directory, it will change that to to the the path to the directory. But sometimes it gets a different title format. Now it says WAP here, and this is when it gets weird. We can also see that first here home directory. I get, I have this layout. I open PIX directory. I get a list layout here, detail list, and then when I open WP, I got yet a different layout, and I have uh, more layout options for different directories. This is uh, my custom DirtTac thing. 
which gets really complicated to, to, to share. I will show you now uh, what, what's going on behind the scenes. The secret, secret sauce. Salsa, salsa beverage. Um, I have this Python script. I have shown you uh, this in, in previous videos uh, a little bit about it. You can use a, a Python uh, package or what it's called, called uh, i3ipc. Um, let's see what it's called in Pacman here. Pacman QSI3IPC. Pimac, Pimacman. Pimac, who, 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 who's that? You know. There we have it. This is the package I have installed uh, from AUR. Um, which you need to, to create a Python listener script here. There are other ways to listen to i3 and I I haven't uh, experimented at all with it. I, I probably should because they added a new feature to i3 with the latest update. I haven't even, I haven't looked anything at it. I just know that it's there, that it, it's called subscribe or something. So you can, I, I think what that does is that you can get away with, you, you don't need Python or anything. I can, I can listen for, for uh, i3 uh, events from uh, bash or whatever just using the i3 uh, message command and, and then subscribe or whatever the new command is called. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I know they added this new subscription feature to i3 which makes it easier to make um, subscription scripts in bash and stuff but whatever, whatever. I use uh, this i3 IPC Python and it works fine. Uh, uh, it works good enough at least. I don't know Python at all. I'm, I I just hack this hack around here. I use a PyCode style linter here, which constantly tell me that I'm writing things wrong, and then I just keep on typing till till I don't have any errors and things works. And sometimes they break. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. Stop getting sidetracked. Title format. Poly b b b here. Uh, here I have set the different events I'm listening to in this uh, Python script. I listen for window events and workspace events. And when a window event occurs, I uh, trigger this uh, method here. And I think you can, whatever, whatever. Uh, window notify is the uh, method triggered whenever a window event happens in i3 and window event then that can be a lot of things it can be a window is created a title changes that's a window event uh, uh, a, a window gets focused that's a window event so every time this happens it triggers this method inside this script that is running in the background um, and then it checks here for different different stuff uh, one thing it looks for if if uh, the container um, the window class is Thunar or Thunar D here, Thunar A or Thunar D. Then it uh, executes this uh, method Thunar that I have over here. And this is uh, where the weird stuff starts uh, to happen. It triggers the Thunar event, uh, then it yet again checks if, if this is just a focus or if the title changes. And if the title changes, then it uh, uh, executes yet another uh, script here now in this case and uh, goes out of this uh, listener script and execute a shell script called Thunar open which I have here and uh, the Python script sends uh, a, a couple of stuff here to this Thunar open and, and and this is this is not pretty code this Thunar open thing I I, I w should uh, uh, rewrite it and I think I will do so in this little video series so we can all use this and be super happy people everyone with cool uh, window manager or uh, file managers or file browsers <clears throat> okay Thunar open uh, Thunar opens and, and this is where I, I in this script it does a lot of things and one is changing this title format the layout uh, it reads, uh, I have my own little special uh, mm, configuration file here called DD rules. It lives inside a, a, a directory called 
let's see what happens here yeah here I have it here config tuner but th this is not official or anything I have created this uh, 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 file by myself and here we can see for instance you remember when I open WP it set the title format to WAP and we can see that here uh, because here I have a pattern every directory that matches this pattern which this directory does it will have these rules and this title format if I don't specify a title, title format here it will display the normal uh, title and I I want this short uh, way to display the, the, the titles because that means it I can have lots of tabs here it's not unusual for me to have like 10 different tabs of different Thunar windows which brings me to another great feature of Thuner uh, is that you can uh, execute Thuner as a daemon uh, from for example your xinit rc file or your startup script or whatever if you if you use this then you can have every Thuner window which will share resources with this Thuner daemon thing it's great it's fantastic it's really good it makes Thuner really fast and and uh, uh, actually very lightweight for being a GUI application but there is a drawback with this if Thunar crashes then every single Thunar open Thunar window crashes which brings me to the next thing here because Thunar uh, yeah the title format we have discussed it layout memory or whatever split view let's take that some other time here um, because Thunar, it crashes. It, it, in my opinion, it's a bit unstable. I should also say that I use, uh, I don't use the um, normal Thunar version. I have this Thunar GTK2, the old version of Thunar that uses GTK2 instead of GTK3. I have just found it to work better in some ways and easier to customize. I, I, I don't know. I use this. It's, it's what I use. This is the tour of what I use and. Please, please, people, don't recommend me any file managers. I don't want... Uh, whatever. Okay, Thunar, it crashes uh, very, very, very easily. It crashes when you do things like this, for example. You can uh, right-click a file and, and select Rename here. Sometimes it just crashes when you do this. When you select a file, click Rename. Or press F2 or whatever the default key binding is and, and, and you rename and sometimes it cra it crashes here when you rename the file uh, it lost its uh, thumbnail here that's something we will get back to how to make thumbnails and stuff work in in, in Thunar and how thumbnails works in file managers in general because there is like a, a, a secret uh, little uh, uh, thing about thumbnails and here's another very nice feature of Thunar, you know, you can you can display thumbnails. You cannot do that in Ranger. I know you're trying now. You you are writing the comments. You should try Ranger uh, terminal. Uh, uh. No, I, I like uh, Thunar as a file manager. Or I like it as a file browser. As a file manager, I use the, the core utilities, you know, find CD LS ln cp mv you know these guys these are very good file managers this this is good for just browsing files because it's really difficult to view thumbnails in the ter terminal even with like dirt hacks like ranger and the, the what it's called like i i don't even know the wm3 web browser thing that you can I make quotation marks here now, but you, you can view uh, images in the ter terminal. It is whatever. I, I, I refuse to, to have images in my terminal. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Now I'm getting a bit sidetracked. Um, but Thunar crashes a lot and it can crash when you delete the file, it can crash when you copy, move everything. It it's, feels very unstable. So I have created my own, I think you saw it there, if I press C, for instance, just the key C, that brings up a menu here, uh, uses i3 menu, as I showed you, with the layout title bar as, as uh, the layout here, which means it will display a menu at the title bar, uh, containing the name of the file here, and then I can just rename this file, press enter, and it's renamed, and it never crashes with this, uh, and I have also created like um, commands for moving and uh, 
creating soft links and hard links and whatever. I needed to do that because Thunar crashed all the time and also I wanted like uh, VI Sevdo VI mode cringe here. Uh, and so, so, uh, so, so uh, I started to create my own little script here. Now I'm navigating with the HJ and K keys here. And that is done with with this program here called Vimlar. It, I know, I know, I'm stupid. Uh, for instance, if I send if I send H as the command to Vimlar, it will just send X to tool key left, meaning navigate left, you know. But I can also do like things like delete files here, uh, rename file is this this guy here, um, and yeah, whatever. And Thunar is actually really nice in that sense that you can create your own custom uh, actions. Here we can see my different actions here. I have, uh, yeah, I have these v, vi down, vi up, vi left, but all of them are actually just um, uh, using this Vimlar and sending here uh, vi right is just Vimlar with L as the option. And rename here vic that is vimlar c and then this is special variables you can use inside these uh, custom actions in thunar and it sends the, the the currently selected file to thunar as the argument to vimlar c and then i can easily use that path to the file and, and create the, my my own commands so it's actually very easy to create your own plugins kind of in thunar and it's very easy to, to bind key bindings to these guys mm -hmm. Uh, with a little dirt hack I have found. Okay, so all of this might just look oh so nice and and fun, you know. But uh, Thunar, it, it it is crazy. I, I as uh, as you could see there, Thunar open. I started that script here in um, uh, 2017. Probably started even earlier than that trying to figure out how, how to work with this and I have tried different file managers I, I, I was using PCMan FM for a long time I, I was using Sunflower I think it was called for for a while uh, and uh, Space FM is Space FM is actually a much better file manager than Thunar but I, I, I was getting really annoyed by some of the UI elements that I could uh, I, I couldn't figure out how to hide the status bar for instance things like that but Thunar is, is a complete mess with this crashing stuff and also the setting system. It's, it, it, it's like uh, you need uh, like a PhD in, in uh, uh, insane open source uh, mega bloat uh, desktop environment uh, uh, development to understand how to set settings and stuff in, in Thunar. Here is for instance the, the key bindings and the key bindings that's called accelerators for for some reason in the GTK world, whatever. You set this, that in this Lisp format here, uh, super weird Lisp format with everything is just, this is control. Control is called uh, primary, of course, with a capital P and inside square. That, that's how you write uh, control inside libla. It's crazy, it's crazy, but I have found a really, really, really good way to set these key bindings so I never have to touch this uh, uh, Lisp file. Well, sometimes I need to, but whatever. We'll get back to that in, in the more uh, in-depth videos where I show how to, how to do all this. But that's really annoying, uh, uh, the setting system, because it also have these settings, uh, which is an XML file here, and that uh, this uh, yeah, this also have a really weird location. Um, let's go my config directory here. I have actually made a, a Zoom link. I highly recommend this uh, because you know uh, the home directory. I think uh, DistroTube made, made made a great video about the clutter that is the home directory. You know, it creates a lot of weird hidden uh, directories. So if I show hidden files here. You know, it's it, then then it takes hours just to find what you're looking for because you have so many hidden folders and files that you have no control over in the home directory, and one hidden uh, directory that you want to open many times is this guy. You know, the the dot config. So I highly recommend you do this. Just lnfs uh, home dot config home 
slash dot or something that will create a zoom link to the config directory in your home <laughs> yeah and, and you get a dot so you never have to to uh, and when you have that then it's very seldom that you have to uh, display the hidden files and you can actually view uh, your home directory without getting eye cancer so that, that that's great actually so this is my config directory and here uh, of course uh, Thunar it stores, stores its settings inside xfce4 here and inside xfconf and inside xfce per channel dash xml here oh here, here you can find Thunar xml that is this file so it's uh, really and it doesn't end here it doesn't end here my friends because you cannot just uh, change settings here and add uh, add add your preferences because many of these preferences are what uh, the XFCE devs are really happy to call hidden settings. So you cannot enable these without enabling the settings themselves. You have to create rules for special hidden settings to do things like show the path in the status bar for instance and it, it, it's like some some of these settings are, are like common things in my opinion at least I, I have no idea why they have hide it and put it under this uh, in this weird way it's really 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 annoying and then you have also these user custom actions that would be really cool if, if I could add my own user actions without using the, the GUI here to do that but then you have to manually add it, uh, add things to this XML file here, which is even stranger, and it creates these unique IDs, which are important. You can, I think, in the latest versions of of um, Thunar, they, they don't uh, rely so much on these unique IDs because that's what you use uh, in 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 the key combination here. I cannot write. Uh, my the name of, of, of the custom action I have to write the unique ID here in the it's insane it's insane uh, <laughs> okay so so um, also 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 for the longest time I had this didn't work so well you know uh, my my dirt tax here Let's go back here. The home folder, the icon view, I go into pics here, list view, I open a directory here, we get thumbnail view, it, everything looks fine and, and good, you know. But uh, for the longest time, this was uh, uh, causing a lot of issues, this uh, uh, auto uh, switching layout. And the way I, I change layout, I, I know, I know, this is a dirt hack. I know it is a dirt hack. I know it is. Some people might get uh, disgusted and I will probably get lots of unsubscriptions from this video just because I'm so stupid here. But I don't care. I, I, I really don't care. Um, I do this to set the layout. Uh, I send a bunch of control, first control zero to, to, to reset the size. And then depending on uh, the, the, the icon size I want, uh, I send uh, control plus or control minus in, in a series here with X2 tool. I know it's it, it's crazy, but it's but it's it, it works and now it actually works qu quite well. But for the longest time it worked, didn't work well at all. And that was because uh, by default, um, these keys here, open parent, that is set to backspace here and back I have set that to F5. That might sound and look really really weird. Uh, first off we should also say that open parent that means go up in the directory tree. So if I would open parent in this directory it would it would go up in the directory tree to probably my home folder because I am in pics now. And if I am in pics pwp and do uh, up parent I will go to the pix directory so this is uh, this is not actually back uh, as in uh, when you are in a web browser you press the back but button you go back in history which which, we, which you do here too because sometimes th these two are not the same thing um, for instance if I go up here now and if I press back uh, that will take me back into the pics directory, but open parent that will take me 
up in the directory tree. So back here, go back to, to pix, open parent, open parent takes me out of the home directory. Uh, okay, why have I this to backspace and F5 here? That is because uh, I, I have made a, a video about this. I have remapped my back button on the mouse, uh, you, you know, the thumb uh, back button. So I can erase things with, with, with that. And, and that is actually very, very nice to, to have that. But it breaks uh, some, some other programs. For example, maybe the web browser, the back functionality might stop working there. You have to remap it here. Some browsers, many browsers have this on default. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that uh, Firefox, you have to add the setting in, in config, about config and stuff. But uh, Chrome-based uh, 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 um, browsers, then you can go back in history with, the back, with Backspace. The file manager here didn't have that, so I had to, to manually uh, set back to uh, backspace. But then I noticed this wasn't right. I wanted I wanted the back button to take me up in the directory tree, like it does here now. Uh, so that's why I have backspace here. F5 as back. This is when it gets weird here now because I have also remapped uh, the forward button on my mouse to F5 because I never ever browse forward in the history. I sometimes uh, open a, a link, oh cool web page, and then I press back button to go back and select a new link or whatever, but I never, never uh, use the forward, uh, go forward in, in history. So instead I remapped that to F5, so I can just press that in the browser and it will send an F5 to, to reload the page. Uh, should reload, yeah, I think it reloaded here, I don't know. Yeah, it, it does reload, I, I think it reloaded this page as well. Sorry, I have to sneeze. <coughs> okay, so uh, my forward button is F5. But in my file browser or file manager, I'm not interested in sending F5 and refreshing the view here. That's uh, completely uninteresting. You can do that. Sometimes it can be uh, desired to do so if you change images and want to reload the, the, the thumbnail cache or something like that. But very seldom you, you, you want to reload instead. But, and here you actually want to go forward forward, but not really forward because uh, let, let's think of it. Think of it like this, if, if um, go up parent is back, I'm, I'm going up, then forward, the, the opposite direction, that should go, that should be <laughs> go down in, in the parent tree, so to speak. And that is actually back, because if I press back here now, then it will go yeah down in, in the tree, so to speak. I know it's it, it's super weird. So uh, when I press forward on my mouse, I am actually triggering the back in history in my file manager, but that takes me <laughs> forward in the uh, uh, directory tree. I know, I know, it's really really weird, but it actually it it, it is nice. It 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 works fine, and and it feel it doesn't feel weird at all. I, there were no adjusting at all. It just worked as, as I wanted to, to do it, I, and I prefer this much more than having a, a forward button to forward and backward button to back here. This this is this is great. I highly recommend you using uh, uh, back and forward buttons for, for this instead. And as a bonus, uh, my uh, this stuff started to work perfect because the, the, the reason th this was acting weird was that if I held, because sometimes I use the keyboard, you know, or most of the time I use the keyboard to navigate. I'm doing that now. I press backspace to go back here up in the directory tree, but then I don't press F5 to go uh, down in the directory tree. Instead, I just press enter because notice that the directory uh, I came from is uh, selected. So I can just press enter instead of F5. So backspace, backspace, enter instead of backspace F5. But I, I, the point is that I don't hold uh, Alt and press uh, left, which I was uh, doing prior to, to adding these settings. And that was what was uh, causing these uh, issues, because Alt key was held down while it was sending this stuff. And that uh, uh, resulted in, in 
some weird stuff so so sometimes the alt key wasn't released and stuff so I couldn't navigate up and down it was sending alt up and down even if the alt key wasn't pressed down and it, yeah it was a mess and and and, and it uh, it was not uh, uh, convenient at all my 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 solution was to I noticed that the, there was some glitch with the alt key so so uh, and th that it worked better if I was really quick <laughs> in in releasing the alt key when pressing alt left for for example but you know that that's not sustainable at all but now that works now with, with this uh, when I have uh, <laughs> backspace and f5 instead as you can see there are so many things and, and, and this is linked this backspace f5 that is linked to this to make this works and this is linked to make this work it's really difficult to share this uh, with, with people because then okay you have to remap this basic uh, uh, universal hotkeys that are the same in every file manager even on windows you have you have alt left and alt up to do this so i don't i don't know i don't know but uh, and also of course we have the split views i haven't even talked about them i can open uh two thunar windows here with i3 you know i have a tab so i can have different uh, windows in in one tab or, or one container uh, and then my, my script that I showed you you know with um, uh, I could rename uh, rename things like this you know I got this and I can rename I, I also have it so if I select a file uh, and press Z I can uh, make a soft link copy move hard link open file in sublime yank the path to the clipboard so uh, if I would do a soft link here, for instance, if I press this here, select this, then it says soft to and then a tilde here. And the tilde is the home directory. And it, it uses tilde here because that's the, the directory open in the other visible Thunar window. So if I want to, I can make a sim link here to this plants guy here. Plants guy. And then it created a sim link here to plants guy. And if I would be in, in a different directory here, for instance box and uh, do this again press Z make a sim link soft no it didn't work of course uh, but it's supposed to, to display box here now I, I, I have been hacking a lot here now uh, b prior to this video because I uninstalled Thunar and all its setting and reset everything so that's why some of these details doesn't work but it's supposed to, to know which window is open here and, and display uh, the directory in, in the menu uh, pre-filled in and and it's no big deal to add this I, I i will look into what's what's wrong but i really like the the ability to have a, a split view uh, but without you i have talked about this also with my uh, sublime here for instance i have you you know this is a this these are two different sublime windows but instead of using sublimes internal splitting we, because it have that i use i3 instead to manage windows because that's what what you have a window manager for managing windows i don't want all every single application to have its own uh, uh, window managing because there are five Thunar doesn't have any uh, win you, you, you I, I think you can have uh, tabs yeah here now I have two tabs here so I can navigate but in, why, why would I use Thunar's internal tab here when I can use uh, i3 tabs instead and I never have to think about that and tabs is kind of a simple simple thing but uh, uh, splits like this that, that, that that's an advanced feature uh, that often programs don't get good at all so Thunar doesn't have split windows but I know Space FM have splits it works but it's you know it's a completely different system uh, and you have to learn the split the resizing split keys and stuff for that program and then you have a different program for Sublime or Vim or whatever it is and then you have a third system for for your i3 and the normal window manager and stuff uh, and my brain just cannot handle all, all of that junk information, especially when I know that I don't need to, when I can have just one way to resize and, and move windows. And the, the obvious uh, biggest advantage is, of course, that 
if you have internal splits, if I would have two splits here in this Thunar window, that could of course only support Thunar windows. But now when I use i3, I can have a split with my file manager and I can change that container to have the Sublime or an image or whatever, you know. It gets uh, a lot more uh, flexible. Whatever. That's uh, my Thunar Rise. So uh, next video, we start from scratch. I uninstall everything again here now because now I know how to apply these weird hidden settings here. I had to write this script to, to add these strange settings I was talking about that you cannot just uh, add without this weird command here. Um, yeah, we, we take everything from scratch and I also feel because I when I when I have been, yeah, as I said, researching my own stupid setup here, I, I, I I, I can almost not stand uh, looking at this code now. You know, a lot of things happen uh, in, in a year. You evolve as a programmer and, and, and the Bash guy, you know. I actually started, well, here I had been using Bash for, for about a year, but I started uh, late 2016, 2017. Prior to that, I, I basically didn't know anything. And Probably if I change this script in a year, I will cringe at, at, the, at the stuff I do now, but whatever. Have a great day everybody, my name is Budrich, bye bye.